So then tooling, very, very important. During the manufacturing planning, it's important to, to have a knowledge. First of all, you can't have somebody that's green, that's giving ideas for tooling. They just don't know. They don't know what's available in the market. They don't, you know. To me, I think the um, variable pitch, um, high helix, end mill changed our industry dramatically with regard to time. I've said that I know they've been around for 20 years now, but in my gener in my time on the shop floor, that really did. Um, make, that was the wow factor that at was, that point. That, yeah, with, I mean, there's a been a lot of a lot of other things that have come out since then. Right. That but was nothing a, quite. That, that was a that was a big change. I mean, Huge. you know, there's I mean, just geometry and grades of of the carbide have just become you know incredibly. Um, advanced, incredibly specific, um, and and easy to use. I mean, you know, when you're doing a production job, you can um, instead of having to like offset a new tool. I mean, depending on what kind of tool that you're using, I mean, you can almost go to like zero offsets for you know changing out a um, a drill head on a drill or something like that, or even like an end mill head. Yeah, so absolutely. that makes it easier to go from um, you know. A, a cutting tool failing to putting a new one in. Right. So well, I have what what type of tools run boom fast? What type of tools run with longevity? Minimal wear and breakage. Yeah. You want to ha- you want to get it so that tool is doing a lot of work, but you don't want to be changing it out every. 10 pieces, No, I mean, right? we, we had a, a perfect um, uh, change over at, at AME when we spec'd out a new mill um, for one of your jobs, Nick, where it was running like three quarters of a shift and the new mill that we spec'd out went just over that one shift. Well, that, that, that created profound um, uh, improvements because then when the next guy started it's on the like next shift- It's like his example. Yeah, on the next shift, then he knows that that's the point at which he needs to right. change the tooling and it's going to run for an entire shift. Exactly. And, you know, when you're running production, that makes that makes a big difference. Plus, the, the machinist should be taking down data. You know, yep. this is when I put it in, I ran 100 pieces and I'm looking at the end mill and now it's pretty- you know, tired. Yeah. I mean, we, we, it's all about, it's, it is all about collecting the data and that continuous improvement because I mean, like you need to know, you know, what your tooling costs are, how many pieces you're getting and you need to make improvements on there and being methodical about that. And hopefully Jim, you and I can talk about that and we can figure out how we, how we could do that for your production jobs. And, but then again, you get, you get the anomaly where, you know, I, they just told me the other day that, you know, They've been running it. They they had an end mill. It ran for 150 pieces in titanium, and it was getting a little worn. And I looked at the end mill. It looked fine. And then they switched. They thought, oh, we better switch it out. They put it in. Everybody loves a new end mill. They put it in. And it broke within three pieces. So, you know, you never know why, because there it's, could have been a hard spot in the material. Like, it's kind of like leftovers. I mean, do you guys like leftovers? Or you like freshly cooked food. Let's be honest. You you like freshly cooked food, right? But even so, so nobody wants nobody wants a worn end mill. In you his know? case, the freshly cooked food didn't you know, work. They didn't even get to finish. I know the that's meal. kind of a yeah. weird situation. I don't know. I, I I mean, I have no feedback as far as that goes. Well, but it could, it, there's a lot of things it could be. It could have been. Could yeah. be, it, you know who taught me a lot about what you're talking about right now? And I got to give them a free plug because their content was so good. But Harvey Tool. No, Harvey made Tool's a guide. Great. Yeah, they to do a great job with that. High efficiency milling. They made the complete guide to high efficiency milling, yep. and it's all about taking uh, less of a radial depth of cut and more of an axial depth of cut. So you're using more of the tool instead of just at the tip there. So and yeah. like well, it depends you know, on the I'm material. I'm a work holding guy, right? So right. So but it goes I was to get, like you go really together. interested in this, and I learned so much from it. But I send it to the guys at making chips and the girls uh, as just an awesome example of how they combined a bunch of thoughtful articles into one really nice guide. Yeah. So sometimes that's why no- you get the free plug because your content was so good, Harvey Tool. So, sometimes the notion is you know you don't want to run it too fast or too deep because you think the cutting tool is going to fail. A lot of the geometries of these new cutting tools are made to go faster and deeper. Yep. And, and you want to be able to push it to the point and even like the coatings and everything that go on it, you want to be able to push it to the point where it's been designed to operate. Sure. And, and I think that that in order to do that, you need to have the right partners working with you and you, and you need to make sure that you're choosing the right tools. And a lot of that happens, Jim, at the quoting process too. I mean, you know, how could you go into a quote and, and understand all of your costs if you don't know what your cycle times are and stuff like that. And that's something you should I have do. somebody helping you, you know with how I do that? that. So here's what I do with the tooling costs when I'm in the estimating pro- 
stage? It's not just the tooling. It's the tooling cost, yes, but it's also what kind of cycle times can that tooling um, I, how, produce How would I me? ever know if it's a brand new, if it's a, I, I mean, I'm you guessing. You can estimate the, those I'm, things. No, you I can, do. I do. Yeah. I have to estimate the cycle yeah. time. But what I do with the tooling is I look at the material. If it's if it's 300, 303 stainless steel, if it's titanium, if it's D2, if it's 15.5 um, stainless steel pre-hardened to 35 you Rockwell. should be using a different tool. I so add, the same tool for like those different, you know, you oh, should, they should be different. They should definitely be different. But um, at the end of the day, it's um, you you generate a cost, and you, I put it into the quote based on that. 